Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, you want my dad? Chavis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will break down how to predict and write down simple covalent chemical formulas and compound names. So, so let's, let's do this. this. Our learning target for today is I can explain and demonstrate how to predict and write simple covalent chemical formulas and compound names. Let's start off with a brief overview of covalent chemical bonds. A covalent bond, also called a molecular bond, is a chemical bond that involves the sharing of electron pairs between two or more nonmetals. The elements in a covalent bond share electrons in order to satisfy the octet rule. The octet rule is basically when atoms transfer or share electrons until they have reached eight valence electrons in their outermost electron shell. Now there are exceptions to the octet rule, but we will keep it nice and simple in this video to help you get the essential information you need in order to predict and write covalent chemical formulas and compounds. In this video, we will cover the three keys you need to know and execute in order to predict and write simple covalent chemical formulas and compounds. We will also review a couple of practice problems as well, but for now, the three keys are the following. First, you need to identify the elements present as being nonmetals and then name the nonmetal first to the left on the periodic table by its elemental name. Second, you need to name the other nonmetal by its elemental name and change its inner to IDE. Third, you need to add the prefixes to indicate the number of atoms of each element in the covalent chemical compound and associates for the number of atoms of each element in the covalent chemical formula. So first things first, we need to know if the elements involved are both nonmetals. If there is a metal and a nonmetal, then it would not be a covalent bond. A bond between a metal and a nonmetal is called an ionic bond. A bond between two or more nonmetals is a covalent bond. We can find this out by looking at our periodic table. Notice that most of your nonmetals are on the right side of the periodic table, all except for hydrogen. So for example, if a question asks if H2O was a covalent or ionic bond, you can easily look at your periodic table and see that both H or hydrogen and O for oxygen are both nonmetals, which would let us know that it is a covalent bond. If the question asks if NaCl was a covalent or ionic bond, you can tell that Na sodium is a metal and Cl chlorine is a nonmetal, so this will let you know it is an ionic bond. Since we now know that H2O is a covalent bond, we would then name the hydrogen first since it is the furthest to the left on the periodic table. Second, we will name the nonmetal on the right of the chemical formula by its elemental name and change it into IDE. For example, in H2O, the oxygen atom is on the right of the chemical formula and will go from being oxygen to oxide. Notice that we remove the YGEN and add the IDE at the end. We're almost done with naming the chemical form. Third, we will now use the prefixes to tell the number of atoms of each element in the covalent chemical formula. Let's go ahead and do a quick review of our prefixes by looking at the following chart. Mono stands for the number one, di stands for two, tri stands for three, tetra stands for four, penta stands for five, hexa stands for six, hepta stands for seven, octa stands for eight, nano stands for nine, and deca stands for 10. Now let's put it all together with our example of H2O. So if you look at the chemical formula of H2O, hydrogen is the furthest left on the periodic table, so we would name it first. Since there are two hydrogen atoms, we would name it dihydrogen. Remember, di stands for the number two. The second word is oxygen. As we stated earlier in the second rule, we would change the ending of the second word to I or IDE. And there is only one atom of oxygen in H2O. So our word for oxygen now becomes monoxide. Remember, mono stands for the number one, and we add IDE to the end, or I. Now, when we write the chemical name for H2O, we get dihydrogen monoxide. The funny thing is, is that dihydrogen monoxide sounds like a poison or powerful toxic gas to most people, but it's actually just a chemical name for water. Two hydrogen atoms equals dihydrogen, and one oxygen atom equals monoxide, which gives us dihydrogen monoxide. Let's take a look at another chemical formula, CCL4. The carbon in this formula is a nonmetal and the chlorine is a nonmetal as well. This lets us know that it is a covalent bond and that we will use its prefixes to name it. There is one carbon atom in this formula, so its name will be carbon. 
Now let's go ahead and answer the question some people may be asking right now. Why do we put mono in front of carbon if there is only one carbon atom in this formula? That's a great question. And the reason why we don't put mono in front of it is because she don't add the prefix mono in front of the first element in a covalent bond, but you would add it in front of the second element in a covalent bond. We would add any other prefix in front of the first element in a covalent bond, just not mono. There are four chlorine atoms in this chemical formula. So what stands for the number four? You got it. Tetra stands for the number four. So we would add tetra at the beginning and change the end to IDE. Chlorine now becomes tetrachloride. Let's put it all together. The chemical name for CCL4 is carbon tetrachloride. But what if a question asks for the chemical formula of a chemical name? Well, that's pretty simple since you know the rules now. Let's take a look at a simple example, carbon dioxide. If you look at the chemical name, both the elements are non-metals. Carbon is and so is the oxygen, which means it is a covalent bond. This lets us know that we need to add subscripts when we write the chemical formula. There is one carbon, so the symbol would be C. There are two oxygens, so the symbol would be O2. So when we put it all together, the chemical formula for carbon dioxide is CO2. Bonus question. What is the correct chemical name and chemical formula for the two nitrogen atoms combined with three oxygen atoms? And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining and demonstrating how to write simple covalent chemical formulas and compound names. You sure let's turn on the device to scan the QR code at the bottom right of your screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep, keep going, going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and also click the bell icon so you miss out on any of our awesome science videos. Peace, and have a positive, productive day.